Welcome to Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane. I'm Karen Barry Schwartz, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane can be heard here on Relevant Radio on 1410 AM and 106.7 FM in Fort Myers and 1660 AM and 93.3 FM in Naples on the last Friday of every month at 8.30 a.m. or anytime at dioceseofvenice.org slash Our Bishop. Your Excellency Bishop Duane, welcome back to Relevant Radio. Thanks very much, Karen. It's good to be with you and our listeners. Bishop, here we are still in the Christmas season of the church and a very joyous time. Sunday is the Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and an opportunity to reflect on the importance of family and look to them as our example. Christmas, of course, is an important time in the life of the church and for all the faithful as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is also a time when our thoughts turn to others, whether it has been Christmas gatherings over the last few weeks, gifts, or perhaps those most in need in our communities. We will be talking more about that this morning on our show, but perhaps you'd like to lead us off, Bishop, this morning with a special prayer that speaks to helping others. Great idea. Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes that we may see you in all our sisters and brothers. Open our minds that we may understand their hopes and dreams, their sorrows and pain, their longing for you, Lord. Open our hearts to give generously of ourselves. Grant us always the wisdom to respond effectively to the needs of your people with grace and compassion. Give us the courage to speak your words of life, peace, love, mercy, and human solidarity, always and everywhere. We do ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Let's talk more about helping others, especially in this season of light and hope and Christmas. Pope Francis recently spoke during this most recent Advent season about preparing to welcome Jesus, and he specifically encouraged Christians to carefully prepare their hearts with prayer and with charity, saying that we ought to encounter Jesus coming in every brother and sister who needs us, and to share with them what we can, listening, time, concrete assistance. It's certainly a a packed statement that the Holy Father has made, but I think we always have to remember that Every human being is made in the image and likeness of God, and that's so important that we have to remind ourselves from time to time to see people that way. And I think, oh, because of our society, so on and so forth, maybe that's not always our starting point. Sometimes we see it and maybe we realize it later, but we have to work with ourselves to first see that image of God. And also, I think we have to understand that we have to allow ourselves to connect with others who may be very different from us perhaps not as fortunate. You know, we live in a country that has a great deal of wealth and certainly a high standard of living compared to many parts in the world. We have to be able to see others that are in our midst that are not part of that and ask ourselves, what do we do to address that? How do we go about it? And then also, as as Pope Francis has said, we must try to encounter Jesus coming in everyone we meet, especially those who are most in need. We have to see Christ in them and see them in their need, and what do we do about that? How do we address the presence of Christ within them? Or do we just see that they don't really look like us, they're not dressed the way they should be, or they're not clean, or the list goes on and on. We can't do that. We have to see Christ in them first and set about to help. That's such an important point. And and just as you said in our opening prayer, Bishop, you began with, Lord Jesus, open our eyes that we may see you in all our sisters and brothers. And that's exactly what you're saying. It's certainly good advice for any season. And I want to point out that even though we have just celebrated Christmas and the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is still the Christmas season of the church. Yes, it is. The Christmas season really runs from, well, technically, I'm going to get a little technical now, first Vespers on the Nativity of the Lord, the birth of the Lord, to the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord on January 8th. So we have a whole season there. Oh, some of the other seasons, the ordinary time, the long season. This Christmas season is very short. Advent maybe was short, Christmas even shorter. Yes. Well, we're still in it, happily. And this morning, we are joined by a very special guest, Eddie Gloria, who is CEO of Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Venice. 
And Eddie can certainly speak to us this morning about the spirit of this wonderful season, and especially, as we've been speaking about, of encountering Jesus in everyone we meet and about helping others through his work in Catholic Charities. Welcome, Eddie, and thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Eddie, and welcome. Thank you, Bishop. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you, Your Excellency, and Karen, thank you for having me on the show as well. Eddie, how are things going with Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Venice? I know that recovery from Hurricane Ian for so many still continues, but how are things going? Karen, the mission of providing hope, providing help and creating hope and serving all continues. Our annual report just came out. Many have received it now in the mail, and it shows a great body of work this past year where we provided hundreds of thousands of services to people in need, housing to people and families and, and elderly and workforce folks, and, and many great things that are meeting needs in this community. Eddie, I'm wondering if you could tell us about the kind of services that Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Venice has to offer. And, uh, you know, it, maybe some of it might be place-specific. But also, I know you worked hard after the hurricane. There were so immediate needs all around. And now it falls into a little bit more of a long-term pattern. Would you go out and with caseworkers, so on and so forth, it's to put everybody back in place on a longer term. Could you talk about all that a little bit? Absolutely, Bishop. As you know, we provide quite a bit of services, and, and you're right, some of them are site-specific. Generally, across our system, we're able to provide financial assistance for many people who come to us. And a lot of times that's in the form of rental assistance or utilities support, and even some folks who might need a, a minor repair to a vehicle to be able to continue to work. We also provide housing. We have over 350 units of housing where we house families, the elderly and the workforce, like I mentioned before, and even moms who are on their own with their children who can stay with us for a time until they are able to get back on their feet. We do provide anti-human trafficking services as well. We are, in fact, one of the leading organizations in the Southwest Florida area providing the service to victims of labor and sex trafficking. And we also have a very robust and growing behavioral health network and system where licensed therapists encounter folks who are in need, engage them in sites that are possibly where it's more convenient for them at their home or at school, depending on what's going on. Those are just some of the biggest services that we're providing. But we also do things like provide companionship to elderly. We also do after-school programming and engage children that way and help them improve in their reading and math skills. So there's quite a bit of services that we've been doing for many years as an organization. And as of late, as you mentioned, Bishop, we did have to turn our attention over to the long-term recovery effort after Hurricane Ian. That has become a very big part of our operation these days. We are staffing up with new personnel to be able to meet that growing demand of helping people that fell through the cracks after the hurricane, who perhaps because of some rejection from FEMA did not receive the support through an application or just do not have the resources through their insurance or other issues that are going on where they really need us to, to make ends meet. Eddie, didn't you partner or aren't you partnering with Lee County in this endeavor to bring back some of that long-term care? We are, Bishop. We, we are partnering with Lee County through a grant from the U.S. Department of HUD, Housing and Urban Development. They issued a community development block grant that allowed us to establish a long-term recovery group. And with the support of Lee County, we have stood up a, an eight-person team that is now engaged in bringing together local nonprofits, service providers, companies, anyone that's involved in the long-term recovery effort, builders, and trying to coalesce all of these resources around these folks who have fallen through the cracks. Eddie, as I understand it, that group that you're speaking of, the Lee County Long-Term Recovery Group, is really there to help fill in the gaps for people who have exhausted the assistance that maybe they received immediately after Hurricane Ian that was made available to them, but they can't reasonably really complete their recovery with just that. That's right. It is exactly what you said. It is maximizing the presence of these groups to really focus in on those folks that are most in need. And so a lot of this kind of comes to play at something that we call the unmet needs table, where these teams all come together and bring the hardest to serve cases and those that might have the most acute needs in that given moment. Someone who is homeless or living in a situation where their home is decaying quickly 
or needs a roof replaced immediately and the insurance is not stepping in. And in those cases, that's where all of these teams come together and we pull resources. Catholic Charities bring some resources to the table. Other partners like the United Way and Lee County bring resources to the table. The Salvation Army, all these groups together work on these cases one by one. And it's been an incredible process so far. We've helped many families. Hundreds of thousands of dollars are already starting to flow in to help these individuals and families. And I think it's a great partnership. And I think it's an honor that Catholic Charities was asked to lead this. Effort. Yes, that's amazing. And Bishop Duane, I know you encouraged and backed this program, this long-term effort. It's not a, a one-shot deal. It's not. Certainly it's not one-shot, it's long-term. And, you know, I think Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Venice has the structure present, has the infrastructure also to reach out, has the expertise, has done it individually, has not done it maybe on the scale that it will now do it. The scope will get much larger. With increased full-time staff, also with a guide to its strategy, looking at how's it strategizing and getting that work done, help with the, oh, to measure progress, raise awareness that they're out there. You know, at times an agency, like anything, grows. And it was time for Catholic Charities for the Diocese of Venice to take a look at why can't it take the lead role? It had done many other roles along with other agencies. And just to step up and be the lead agency, I think is a compliment to Catholic Charities in the diocese. We're interested in doing what we can to help our brothers and sisters in need, truly. I, th I think it's wonderful that Catholic Charities is certainly the lead in this effort. And I know, Eddie, that there is a great and continuing need out there. I read in your annual report that Catholic Charities delivered more than 300,000 services this year, including some of the things you were talking about, housing, food assistance, financial aid, like rent and utilities, anti-human trafficking, senior support. And I know that you always, Eddie, speak about not only the assistance provided, but about promoting dignity and belonging, which I think is really an essential part of what you do at Catholic Charities. It is. We, we absolutely believe that people need dignity. And we want to provide services in a dignified way, in a way that empowers them, in a way that gives people hope and the sense of the ability to improve is in their hands. And we, we certainly have focused our energy in our process and in our operations to become as meaningful a system of change as possible. We want people to come through our system once, maybe twice, and never need us again. And that's what we're trying to build. And dignity is certainly an, an intangible thing, but I think that just for our listeners out there, I know that we've talked about this before, that there are things like letting people choose their own food at a food pantry rather than just having a bag of food handed to them. That imparts dignity on a human being. And there, I know you have also showers available for homeless people who may not have an opportunity to shower anywhere else. That's right. And, and that's a perfect example. We did create choice food pantries in our system that do allow people to come in and make their own choices. It does also promote this idea of making healthier choices for yourself and really taking the things that you feel will be what you want to serve for your family or what you all like to eat. And that's empowering. That is a self-governance thing mm -hmm. that I think goes a very long way. And the shower program that you mentioned as well, the other component of that is, yes, come in, take a shower, but then once you're done, help yourself to a clean set of clothes that is available. Choose the clothes that you'd like, and it's an exchange where they can leave soiled clothing there that we will take care of, and we can offer them a fresh set of clothing that, that will also help them feel more dignified and, and better about themselves as they walk out. I'd like to say one thing on that point about dignity that you mentioned. And this is a little philosophical, which our conversation isn't. It's about more practical things. But to say the church has always said that the dignity that the human being has is God-given. We need to recognize the dignity. By my actions, I don't give that person dignity. They have it. It's God-given. God has made them with every individual in his image and likeness. And that's the dignity we talk about. So it's there. What we have to do is learn to recognize that, that it's there in everyone. Sometimes we think it's not. And sometimes, you know, an individual approaches you and they don't see a lot of dignity within themselves. And then our job's a little bit different. It's not only to recognize it, but to teach them. God has given them the dignity. Now they have to go about and live that. It's a philosophical point, but it's a point of departure that is key always with the church. The individual has the dignity. We have to get the world to recognize that. 
about each and every person. Such an important point that dignity is is God given. And the things that were the practical things that we're talking about, I think so many of us, myself included, take for granted, right? Picking out our own groceries, taking a shower. I mean, it's just things that you don't think of and are second nature, but to many, it's extremely important and maybe missing from their lives. Absolutely. I think it's a beautiful point that Bishop makes here. And it reminds me that our system is a reminder to people of their dignity as they come Mm -hmm. through and they have these encounters where they're treated with respect. The door is open to them. They're served by our team in a way that says, you count, you're important, you're one of God's children. That reminder is empowering and beneficial. I think that's part of our mission where we say we we create hope. And that's where I think people find it. You are listening to Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane on Relevant Radio. I'm Karen Barry Schwartz, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane can be heard anytime at relevantradio.com and on the last Friday of each month at 8.30 a.m. on 1410 a.m. and 106.7 f.m. in Fort Myers and 1660 a.m and 93.3 FM in Naples, or anytime at dioceseofvenice.org slash ourbishop. Eddie, I- I'm just wondering how you manage it all. Uh, let me just share some statistics I read from this year alone for Catholic Charities Diocese of Venice. 10 counties, 29 programs, 60 sites, 106 staff members, 393 volunteers, and 335,312 services provided. How do you manage all that? And is, is it just continue to grow or is there any end in, in sight? Well, the needs are great and it is continuing to grow. And frankly, Karen, we have been blessed with an incredible team. God has given us dedicated men and women who are passionate about helping people. They love the work that allows them to have an impact on, their, on the lives of their fellow men. We do have a distinct advantage, I believe, of having Bishop in our corner praying for us. And I think we have an incredible amount of volunteers that show up every day, year after year, supporting our effort. And so our 106-person staff might look more like a 1,000 because of these folks that come and support us. We have supporters, parishioners, the Catholic faithful in our community, folks who are not Catholic, who send us their support through the donations that they make on a a yearly basis that allows us to advance our mission. And it's critical to be able to count on these volunteers, these funders, and even our, our local partners. Some of the local governments, Lee County, Sarasota County, Collier County, have come out and supported our effort. And we are grateful to them because without that support of all these people coming together, we could not do what we do. Eddie, I think every year, Catholic Charities runs a Christmas appeal. Now, I earlier said the Christmas season was a little short, but I think with this appeal, we start a little before, I think it even started in Advent, and it goes well into ordinary time. It goes to February. Would you talk a little bit about the Christmas appeal, the kind of critical need it addresses, and what it means in terms of support of the the work that your staff does? Absolutely. And you're right about the timing on it, Bishop. It does start right around that point in Advent, and it comes into, like you said, into January and February. And it is a critical part of our mission. The Christmas Appeal is the time of the year where we see the most support come in, and that gives us the fuel to really push through to the end of the following year. And it gives us the ability to provide the many services that we're able to provide. As you know, shortly after the storm came through after Hurricane Ian, we stood up a tent site operation where we provided food and water and distributed a bunch of supplies to people in need. And shortly after that, we switched over into the long-term recovery effort. As you know, disaster relief continues for more than 300,000 people in the diocese that have been impacted by Hurricane Ian. And so there's a lot of work to be done there. Over the past year, 5,000 services were provided to victims of human trafficking. And unfortunately, it seems that the issue there continues to grow. There's more than 270,000 hungry children and adults that we assisted at our food pantries. And the 22nd Annual Christmas Appeal for Catholic Charities, this is our 22nd Annual Christmas Appeal, it'll continue to be a a critical piece of supporting those activities and other things that we are involved in. Yeah. So those are some impressive numbers you gave, and it's important, I think, to keep in mind always that every number, each and every one of them represents a child, a family, an individual. They went to Catholic Charities because they had nowhere else to go. 
and they rely on the support of Catholic Charities to get through a crisis, to get through a desert time. Call it what you want. Catholic Charities really does a wonderful job, I think, of providing through their programs that not only help in a crisis, but assist in improving daily lives of those who reach out to Catholic Charities. And that's why support in the form of donation to Catholic Charities Christmas Appeal, it's really appreciated and it's critical to the work that you have to do. I want to go back to a point Eddie made earlier. Eddie, you were saying some of your volunteers and so forth are not Catholic, and you don't have to be Catholic to receive help from Catholic Charities. I know your mission statement says serving all. That's right. You do not have to be Catholic. We do serve all. And to Bishop's point, each one of these numbers does represent a child and a family or an individual who has come to us, regardless of their background and their faith. And I feel that we are carrying out a very important mission from Christ himself, right? To love the poor, to feed the hungry. And that's what we're trying to do here. And we appreciate, Bishop, your comments, and we feel blessed to have the support, your guidance and and presence as well as we uh, carry out this very important mission. And the mission Eddie's speaking of, he mentioned earlier, of course, his Catholic Charities is to provide help, create hope, and serve all, regardless of faith, and to support the Christmas appeal that we've been speaking of this morning, which is the 22nd annual Christmas appeal for Catholic Charities Diocese of Venice. If you'd like to support that, you can mail a contribution directly to Catholic Charities Diocese of Venice, Inc. at 1000 Pinebrook Road in Venice, Florida, 34285. Or visit Catholic Charities online at catholiccharitiesdov.org slash donate. And remember that every gift matters, no matter the amount. And every gift, when combined with others, makes a significant difference for those who turn to Catholic Charities for help. Eddie, I'm wondering at this point, if you could tell us that long-term recovery group that Catholic Charities is working with, with Lee County, could you tell us a little bit more about that, that, that unique grant that you have to help out in Lee County? Absolutely. We received a little over a million dollars annually over the next five years to be able to provide a team of people on the ground that will help bring together a little over 200 different entities. That's including nonprofits, businesses, construction companies, builders, and developers to help rebuild the community in Lee County. And this team operates with the principles of these different groups to identify where the greatest needs are and to coalesce whatever resources are available on the ground and also to advocate for additional funding by submitting grant applications to entities like the the American Red Cross that have already started to provide support on the ground. And so their responsibility is to, to lead the charge of this great work of compassion and support for these people that, again, are in in the greatest need and seem to be falling through the cracks in our community so that no one's left behind. Okay, Eddie, you're on a roll now. And Karen, I'm going to keep them going because I'd like to hear (laughs) about some of the the youth mental health work that you're doing that Catholic Charities has moved into. And I believe you've got some recent grants in that area also. Could you talk about that? Absolutely. Well, as you know, Bishop, we have been for many years involved in providing behavioral health services to children, school-age children in the Collier County school system. And that program is supported by the Naples Education Foundation. I think that does not the Naples Wine Festival, some of the funds come that they transfer. That's what I remembered. That's right. It is, it is through the Naples Children Education Foundation with proceeds from the Naples Wine Festival that happens every year. They've supported us for many years, and we have been able to provide services to children inside the Collier County school system. In fact, at this point, we're into 16 different Collier County public schools. That program has done so well that we were asked by the Lee County Public Schools to replicate the same model in their county school system. And we applied for a grant to Florida. Don't they say imitation is the highest form of flattery? Go ahead. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) We applied for a a grant to the Florida Blue Foundation, and we were awarded $300,000 to stand up this new team that we're trying to build in Lee County and provide licensed therapists in these school systems in Lee County. And I'm happy to report that they've opened the doors to 14 schools in the Lee County school system so far. And our team are able to meet the children on site. So we're bringing the service to them rather than expecting them to come to us. We're able to engage them on site and speak to them. And over time, when our therapists learn that there are other issues going on with the family, then we're able to also invite the family to engage us in that way. 
What a contribution. It is, a, it is such a great contribution. And I think in the broader picture, mental health, it used to have a stigma associated with it. And now, fortunately, that is diminishing. And it's such a huge need, especially for young people. I think, Eddie, just talk a little bit, if you could, for us about what that does for the community, right? It, people who are raised to learn coping skills is going to build a more resilient community. That's right. I think a lot of people struggle with many different issues. I think that's human to struggle and to encounter challenges and difficulties. And a lot of times people do it on their own. A lot of times they do it in isolation and perhaps even with some poor counsel or bad advice on how to deal with things. And so what our team is able to do is give people, especially these young people that we're engaging, the tools to cope with difficult situations because we're going to have them in our lives many times. It's important to be able to address them in a way that's healthy, that puts you in a position of strength and gives you the ability to recover over time from these challenges that you face. So I feel like our team is doing a, a very important work for the future of the community as well. I just think if, you know, the age of those young men and women that you're helping, if they can get through some of those traumas, come on, we were all teenagers at one point, it gets so complicated sometimes that's when right. it really isn't. And somebody can help them move through that and just get them on a path that's much healthier for them. So. Absolutely. Especially at that critical juncture, like you mentioned, Bishop, when you're a preteen or a teen, those are some of the toughest years. So to be there for them now, I think is, is such an important thing that we're able to do. Well, we're running out of time this morning, although I certainly enjoyed our conversation this morning with Eddie Gloria, who is the CEO of Catholic Charities. And Bishop, Catholic Charities is the charitable arm of the Diocese of Venice, and its health is critical in addressing the needs of the people of the diocese, especially in the wake of Hurricane Ian. And after Ian, we had less destructive Adalia. And right. I know that caused some damage throughout the diocese and, and some troubles for our people. But it is certainly important that people support the Christmas Appeal if they can. Please help Catholic Charities in this Christmas Appeal. Allow them to continue to develop their priorities that they've begun with, they've identified. The young people are part of it those who are trafficked. And I think sometimes we forget about that. Oh, it doesn't happen here. Oh, Florida is a major place. And the area we live in is prime territory for individuals who are trafficked. And that's what I spoke of earlier about the dignity of the human being. Got to start there. I don't grant them their dignity. God gave it to them. But I must recognize it in all that I try and do. We have been talking this morning with Bishop Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice, and Eddie Gloria, CEO of Catholic Charities Diocese of Venice, about the ongoing long-term recovery efforts in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, which still lingers, and all the good works that Catholic Charities does here in the Diocese of Venice. Catholic Charities Christmas Appeal continues through February, so please consider a contribution to help them in their work, which is critical and actually life-saving to so many in our diocese. To support the 22nd Annual Christmas Appeal, mail a contribution directly to Catholic Charities, Diocese of Venice, Inc., 1000 Pinebrook Road, Venice, Florida, 34285, or visit Catholic Charities online at catholiccharitiesdov.org slash donate. Remember that every gift matters, no matter the amount, and every gift, when combined with others, makes a significant difference for those who turn to Catholic Charities for help. And this Sunday, we mentioned briefly, is the Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And we're grateful to God for providing us with a model of family to inspire and motivate us in love, charity, and the importance of family life and, and giving. Bishop, perhaps you'd like to close the prayer for the family. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Spirit upon the families of the world today to assist them, to help them in every way they can to allow them to create an atmosphere that is conducive to the personal growth of all the members of the family, that they're able to realize the full potential that you have given them. We do ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Duane. And thank you, Eddie Glorious, CEO of Catholic Charities Diocese of Venice, for our discussion today and joining us. And to our listeners, please support the work of Catholic Charities Diocese of Venice, especially in this Christmas season. Embrace the spirit of Christmas when so many have so little or are perhaps feeling alone in the world. You have been listening to Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane. I'm Karen Barry Schwartz, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Witnessing Faith with Bishop DeWayne can be heard here on Relevant Radio on 1410 AM and 106.7 FM in Fort Myers and 1660 AM and 93.3 FM in Naples on the last Friday of every month at 830 AM 
or anytime at dioceseofvenice.org slash ourbishop.